Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another off-brand serial cast. Hosted today by Rakatan, myself, and the one and only Mad Buddha. Hey, hey. Today, we're casting a game on Infernal Shrines in the Blue Trunks, Beast Coast. Lothrian on Jaina, Supergoat on White Mane, Ceres on Ragnaros, Cavalat Rest on the Elite Torrin Chieftain, and Mig on Malthael. On the red side, we have Stitches, Be Crazy, representing their team, Techio on Alexstrasza, Maxzilla on Gul'dan, Cheese playing Phoenix, GZB playing, oh, what does he go? Ural, there you go. He was <laughs> there. And Belalos playing Johanna. This looks like we've got an excellent matchup today, a Division B match. This will definitely be the highest ELO cast game that we've gotten to do so far here at Off Brand Cast for Off Brand Serial. I'm looking <laughs> to see if these guys do uh do anything different from the Div D teams we've been casting so far. I expect the team fights are gonna be absolutely epic. What do you think? Well, well let's first take a look at the draft. We've got the uh, well one thing I've seen is White Mane over on the blue team. She is a powerhouse right now. Uh I can't believe they got that through the draft, but it looks no like... Kidding. I mean, I imagine Stitches Be Crazy either forgot about it or have a plan to deal with it. So that'll be interesting. Although, on the Stitches Be Crazy side, we have Gul'dan, an excellent damage dealer if you can get a right, the right person to play him. We'll see which of those powerhouses is able to bring their team to victory. And yeah, no kidding, I think it's really gonna come down to Magzilla and Cheese here and their ability to deal enough damage to break White Mane's healing. White Mane herself, between the armor that she can get at level 10, provided she goes to that heroic, and just the incredible amount of AoE burst healing she can put on a whole team, it makes for a very, uh, very difficult, very sustained kind of fight. So I think yeah, that very... it'll come down to those three and who plays the best. Very strong healer, although, if you notice, they do only have the one tank, Elite Torn Chieftain, main tanking for them, everyone else on their team, uh, either a bruiser or a damage dealer. So you've got uh, Jaina and Malthel, primary damage dealers, and Ragnaros as that extra little one. Meanwhile, Stitches be crazy running the standard two tank composition. So uh, we'll have to see how these fights shake down. So far, nothing yet on the map. Lots of getting camps, lots of rotation. Uh, lots of really good coordination looks like from both these teams rotating correctly. Ragnaros getting that top camp actually going to be uh, getting a little low there. Watch out. Oh. Is he going to get finished <laughs> off? No, oh, man, just to make it out. Wow. Oh, man, that uh, a little bit of a close. unfortunate there. Malthale not uh, coming down to help his teammate White Mane also rotating up. Uh, that gives Stitches be crazy time to go and get their camp now at that level lead. Looks like yeah. they have been doing a, uh, a little bit really, of a better job, yes, on the uh, really rotations here. Good job uh, soaking these lanes. Hmm, I definitely but the think first that the, shrine is activating. The first shrine here is gonna go in favor of Stitches Be Crazy. Not only with the uh, little bit of a level lead they have, but I, I really prefer their shrine-based composition. Their overall team fight, I think, is uh, a little lacking until late game. But between Johanna and Gul'dan on the point. I think they'll have a much better time clearing than Ragnaros and Jaina. As the yeah, they've got a lot of tank presence, they've got a lot of frontline, and that is going to allow them to more aggressively go in and take these... Uh, Malthale's these not down. here? Malthale choosing to to uh, clear top instead of going in. It looks like... Looks like they're Malthale. just going to concede the first shrine phase. I guess they feel that because of the, uh, the level down already and the fact that Stitches be crazy. We're able to get on to the point here first that Beast Coast just is okay with letting them have the first one. It's not the most powerful Punisher throughout the entire game, so it's definitely yeah. the one to give up if you're going to give up any of them. But I guess they're playing for Interesting rotation tens. there uh, by Beast Coast going middle. Uh, I thought they were actually going to go top and maybe try to get a fort for a fort here, but uh, it looks like they do decide to. Oh, to top. And however. Oh, nothing's It'd just be crazy. He sends two top to uh, deal with the Malthale, so they're not going to get all that much from this first Punisher. I mean, usually you don't. You get a wall of not even uh, not even half the fort there. Well, I guess getting a wall is classically 
the most that you get. It's usually unusual to get an entire fort unless the other team really messes up. So they still got exactly as much as you would expect off of a first Punisher. And they tried for a gank attempt. Definitely trying to minimum or min-max there. Oh, uh, here we go. Potential. Beast Coast going for the aggressive siege camp, but Stitches be crazy. He's going to come in here. It's four versus four. Big damage onto the ghoul damage, but he comes back. No damage as of yet. Very defensive from play oh, from both teams. Jaina getting really low there. Yorel going to come in. Let's see if she can get the Lothrian very low, but the ETC slide gets her out of range of the Yorel. Wow. They managed to escape the four versus five. That was a really clutch play there. I thought for sure with Yurel coming down and Malfail not rotating behind her that that Jaina was going to go down and maybe open up a chance for a push here by Stitches Be Crazy, but in the end, they're just, just barely making it out because Cavalat rest uh, really peeling like an absolute beast. Definitely yeah, belongs on Beast there, Coast. Staying behind his team, covering the escape. Malfail hold oh, out. going to get... Oh, is he going to go down the last minute here? Is it going to be enough? No, it is not. She's taking wow. five damage from the tower, but it's not going to be enough. Kavala at rest on the rotation, but the rest of his team is just a little bit too slow. Uh, and that is going to be first blood going to <laughs> Stitches Be Crazy. Stitches Be Crazy have been much faster on the rotations of the team this entire time. They got an early level lead before first Punisher. They're always the ones making the first plays to getting a gank off, and seeing them be successful finally here with a kill is uh, not too surprising with the way this game has gone. Now are they sitting they are about pushing? to hit level 10 and going for that aggressive siege camp. Now it is going to be very dangerous for Beats Coast to stop them here. So they know that they're 10, they're not going to get people coming out to fight them, so they're going to take that free siege camp, and it looks like they want to push with this. Uh, I would hope so. I mean, with a 10 advantage, it's it's not something you want to play defensively with, basically. You always want to take your 10 and, and do something, but right now they're just soaking. I'm not sure I can get behind this play here. Yeah, Gul'dan, really their best siege character, uh, is going to clear ways. Oh, big oh. damage on the Lothian and Super Goat. Wow, that Jaina was so boat low, but White Mane is an incredible healer. Oh, it's still 11-9. Are they going to try it? This is the siege that I was Lothrian? talking about here. Lothrian getting low again, moving a little bit too far forward, getting caught up by Cheese and Maxzilla. ETC playing a really good defense for his Ooh. team right there. Lothrian really stepping up and taking that damage. But yeah, thankfully he's got a lot of his faith in his white mate. Yeah, no kidding. Super Goat, as we said earlier, is definitely playing uh, an excellent game so far. Only conceding one kill as a team is Beast Coast. And that's definitely... A <laughs> Big thanks in part to the white main here, but as the game goes on and Maxilla and Cheese start to get more damage in Phoenix and Gul'dan, uh, I, I expect the white main will really have her work cut out for her at that point. So it'll be more interesting as the game goes on to see how these team fights shape up. Yep, so far the damaging team of Beast Coast not able to get enough damage down onto the enemy oh. team in order to get there. Nice! Oh, right, miss nice dance! There by ETC, but the miss dance get anyone and he's now in a bad position lots of damage coming out there's oh, the old by white main johanna goes down but is it going to be enough beast coast is getting pushed out of this even down four up five before maxilla putting out the damage on this one urel being very aggressive pushing beast coast off the point i mean beast coast lives but are they going to be able to secure the punisher they still have to step up again and they only, only need got four. four left they just need to stay for a little bit longer two left Alex can Raza? they finish it off 38 teclo getting caught in the back Techio, my my apologies lothrian and there it is they only needed two more that was easy enough wow what incredible play a, uh, was that okay no it is a horrifying gold den for some reason I, uh, looked at the Alex I looked at the Alex Straza ult and was like, did he, did he take Reign of Destruction? <laughs> no, he definitely no, went no, horrified in that fight there. Now we see here, Stitches be crazy pushing in. Are they going to be able to get a fort this time? Oh, Lothrian up the top. Punisher. G's playing really far forward there. Lothrian, though, very, very low. The ult coming up from Johanna. She is going for it, but the counter ult by White Mane is going to allow them to get away. She's playing really far up here, but thankfully he's got his team at his back. Uh, they managed to get Yorel, a fort meanwhile. there, and they didn't even use that much uh, health on their Punisher. Are they going to keep pushing? Yeah, very aggressive. 
Phoenix and Gul'dan are both pretty good uh, siege heroes. Phoenix got the mobility to, to get back when he needs to, and Gul'dan, with that corruption, it is he's just a monster. Oh, and the fire is being purged down bottom lane by Ragnaros. Yep, so Very we do nice. see that ult taken instead of the uh, Sulfuros. I guess they're looking to play for a macro win over a team fight. They might feel as if the uh, Gul'dan Phoenix is going to be too much for White Mane to handle, so they're going to try to look for other options to stall out the game and get keeps through macro, and I guess that would lead to a big fire wave pickup here. From I'm not Cyrus. sure that's the strategy they wanted to use, honestly. Just based on their rotations and how uh, how well Stitches Be Crazy has been doing in terms of their rotations, Beast Coast switching to a macro style right now might not be the best idea for them, but, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, I think Beast Coast isn't in too terrible a position, but as always, teams with great burst potential, like uh, Jaina ETC, here, I have a great chance of making comebacks or making big plays through bush cheeses and aggressive rotations. So, as Absolutely. long as they make that happen, they'll have plenty of opportunities to get back into or stay in this game. And if they can time them around punishers, then yep, we're they'll on be able even to have talents a, now. A great chance. However, five man bottom, Malfail a little bit slower on the rotation. Doesn't look like we're gonna have any big fight yet. ETC looking for that. Looking for that uh, dance. Oh, there he goes. He goes in Huge. the three man, but he gets stunned out of it, but not before. Huge shield. amount of damage. The fear comes out. Cool then falls. The damage coming out onto Bellulose and GZB is too much. Oh, but ETC oh, a little too Phoenix. far from there. Cheese, cheese, cheese. putting out the damage. You're oh, cheese. Oh, my God. And a huge change here from Stitches be crazy. You're all still Oh, we go. man. Wow. And Ragnaros, the sole survivor. Wow, what, cheese! What a fight! What a cheese. turn there by Phoenix! What a player! Stepping up at the right moment, dishing out an absolutely unbelievable amount of damage, and that coming right after they lost school Dan to start the fight. That's all they needed was some cheese. My goodness! Whew. <laughs> yeah, that was a really, really well played fight there by uh, by Stitches. Be crazy! Beast Coast getting a little bit too cocky there, grouping up and. Letting Phoenix just absolutely wreck their health bars. We have another fight here? Oh, I guess they're all just going to back away on the side of Stitches be crazy. With a fight like that and double camp pressure coming before the uh, next Punisher phase, Stitches be crazy is in an absolutely commanding position. If, <laughs> if Beast Coast can't find some sort of uh, big pick out of a bush cheese or some sort of macro advantage here, then... They're just going to fall further behind, and I think they're definitely losing a keep if they lose this next Punisher. The Stitches oh, absolutely. be crazy. And, I mean, Stitches be crazy, as we've said, has the much better point clear, and they're just sacrificing it, or are they going for Urel as a pick? I mean, Urel is uh, <laughs> not the easiest pick in the world, let no me kidding. tell you. Just walking uh, away. You, how you feel about the Malthale? He's been split-pushing a lot about uh, this game. Do you think that's the right call? Do you think he adds uh, anything to the burst potential of this composition or do you think they picked him just to be that um, that wave player and maybe to counter the uh, the big tanks if they picked him just to split for the wave clear then they, they picked the wrong character they definitely should have gone with a global like Dahaka or Falstad or something that could come in and instantly and still be very useful I think that a lot of the reason Malfail has been forced to split is because they're constantly so behind on rotations to stitches be crazy and it's more of a last ditch tactic than something they were really looking to do. I can understand his place in team fights for them, but being behind and late to every team fight the way they are, it's been hard for them to really use their composition effectively. Wall three and getting jumped on the uh, jumped by the Punisher there. Ragnaros gonna use his uh, his passive, but man, look at the damage coming up from Gul'dan. Just a couple of corruption stacks and that. Ragnaros building is absolutely destroyed. However, unable to push in and get a keep here. That's true. It was an, a, quite an impressive hold for being uh, two levels and a talent down here on the side of Beast Coast. Definitely not something I would have expected. Now to on see. a talent, oh. ETC going in, gets the two man, but the fear coming out 
and oh, huge stacked. damage on the MIG. What a face! Oh, oh, look at the geez. damage! Two My people God. go down. Cavil Rest is also going to go down. Oh, never mind. The healing from White Man is going to... Oh, no! He does, in fact, wow. go down. I thought he was going to live there. But All right, what? you're officially being fear. replaced by Cheese on Off-Brand Cereal. If you're watching this, Cheese, just know we got an open spot for you. <laughs> this guy is a player. I mean, we said it was going to be up to, but it's between Maxilla, Cheese, and the white main player down here, Super Goat, but, oh, yeah, man, I mean, Cheese is just, he, he, he's bringing the cheese, man. If you have yeah, a party and you just, need some cheese, you invite this guy. That was an because, incredible amount of damage coming out Wow, from both Gul'dan and Phoenix. Yeah, the combination of the slows on the side of, <laughs> should be, Stitches be crazy, to, Compliment Phoenix's ultimate that the salvo is working wonders. They don't need both carries to really be alive and do a lot of work as long as they both do enough work. The combination that allows Cheese to just take teams apart is oh yeah, been no, so I think, impressive. Uh, I mean, Johanna is a great pick just by herself, but just in this case, she is doing absolute work for her oh? team. Ghoul Dan is this the and Phoenix both able to capitalize. Wow, scapegoat in the or super goat in the back. Saris also getting hit. Urel going very hard. Cavill rest, not able to do anything. Lothrian getting back. Oh, there he is going to go down. Ooh. Unfortunately, only four people in that team fight, but uh, or for Beast Coast, but Urel is just so aggressive and so hard to deal with in your backline. And yeah. ETC, the only tank on their team, just cannot keep up with the amount of CC that Stitches be Crazy is putting out here. I mean, Ragnaros trade coming out, and mm -hmm. crazy. He's gonna back up. Yorel using her ult there. I oh, know they say hindsight is twenty twenty, but with the team comp they have on the side of Beast Coast, I think it would have been much more impactful to either bring Ragnaros hammer to the team fight to get those burst kills to happen up front, or to switch into some sort of di uh, dive based play with Malfail and ETC falling on the back line in combination with a flanking Jaina to just remove these carries. I don't think they uh, quite fully uh, recognize the threat of Ghoul Dan and Phoenix in the back on the side of Stitches Be Crazy and not being able to deal with them in a uh, aggressive manner in, in a manner yeah, that they both, would like to do is really high back. Tier, both really high tier carries there. But I mean... Honestly, I think that uh, Beast Coast had a really good team fight set up if they had taken Sulfuraz. You got the ETC yeah. stun, you've got the Jaina ult with Ring, and the Sulfuraz. That's a lot Ooh, of CC. You can rest. immediately lock down one of those big carries. Gul'dan has no way of getting out of that. Cheese, if you lock him down, he's also pretty, pretty done. But level 20 here for Stitches Be Crazy. They are going to get this Punisher. And this might be the game unless... Uh, Beast Coast can hold, but even if they can, where is the value for them to get uh, on this map in order to get back into this game? Well, I mean, they know they can't get top, and right now they're just soaking. If they had at least swung bottom and mid at the same time, maybe get this fort a couple of towers here in mid, they'd at least be looking at a 19 and a half to 20 here coming into their base. It would have given them a much closer uh, attempt at least holding statistics wise but they also might have been able to get 20 with a nice early pick in this upcoming fight but not opting for that rotation has put them into a uh, a very different advantageous spot where now not only are they facing a punisher and a fives of 20 but they're also going to have an extra camp coming down i really feel that the uh, b steps lack of uh, aggressive macro rotations for the given situation has been holding them back all game and that's only continuing to Hurt them as yeah, the game Malfail had the right idea there, trying to go for that bottom port, maybe get them just an extra bit of EXP that they get in 20 before this uh, Punisher lands on their core. Oh, Playing the fire. very defensively right now, no team is committing really hard. ETC looking for that thing, but Yorel decides, I'm just going to go on the core. What are you going to do to stop me? There is there looking for the Ghoul Dan in the back. ETC looking for the the dance but he doesn't find it lost and getting absolutely dominated by this punisher that is just she is completely out of this fight because of that punisher oh, but they still haven't been able to finish oh the my god here. look at the ghoul dan damage on to white oh cavil right rest wow, oh the damage. check he's, he's, he's still, he's, he wants it so bad but he's not gonna get it the fear coming out 
that is gonna be the end of Super Goat and ETC. Sarah is trying to come back in here. Ural continues to wear on the 40. corner. 35%. Sarah's looking to go in, but look at the health on this Ninja Be Crazy team. There is no way that they do not win. GG Stitches Be Crazy takes game one.